Hola a todas y todas, this is Sarah Casanova Reed for my virtual presentation about special education and bilingualism. So let's get started with our first question. Also, I just want to apologize if I'm a little um, with a glow. Uh, my air conditioning is uh, está fuera. So, yay me. Okay, um, our first question is, why can students with special needs be bilingual? And one of the things that we've learned in this chapter and through these resources is that there are a lot of misconceptions already about English language learning and then you add on special education and people don't understand. So, um, that's why it's really important that we learn about it, right? And one of the videos that I found that was really interesting was a Canadian doctor talking to um, parents, bilingual parents of special needs children in Canada who were concerned about their autistic children learning two languages and how to implement that. And they were asking the question, should I just focus on English? Um, you know, what can I do for my child? I want them to be bilingual, but I don't think that it's, that they, I think that English is more important. So what can I do for them? And in our assigned video uh, with Dr. Brenda Borman, she talked specifically about this and said, as a matter of fact, that bilingual special needs children do in fact seem to learn as well as monolinguals learn one. And it's not only possible for these kids to learn, but it's also important for them to learn because if they don't learn both languages, even if it's not you know, as fluently as a regular able, able child can, um, it's important for them to, to do that because if they don't learn their native language and their parents' mother tongue, then it can be detrimental to self-esteem, it can ostracize them from their community, and it can be jarring if parents um, are talk have been talking to them in one language their whole life and then all of a sudden switch to English just because. Um, it can be emotionally disturbing for them and for anybody. So that's super important to keep in mind. Another thing is that according to the text, there's evidence that the that dual language and special education speech therapy, instead of the just the dominant language, special education speech therapy, is much more beneficial for these kinds of students. And um, going back to the video with the autistic children and the Canadian doctor, um, she explains to these parents that it will take time for their children to start thinking, using, and speaking in both languages. And say if they took away their home language and then wanted to reintroduce it, that it probably would take um, anywhere from three months to a year for those children to start implementing it in their life. And that that period is called the silent period and it really it really reminded me of another video that i also have links to i have links to all the videos in the doobie doo okay um that where a where it talks specifically about children with with disabilities and um this was for another class and he said that the greatest gift that you can give to a disabled child is time and that is what the silent period is all about it's just giving them time to learn okay so let's move on to number two uh, or numero dos what does the national center for educational statistics say about students from different ethnic groups in special education programs um, one of the common themes throughout uh, throughout this chapter and throughout our learning resources this week is that there is an over and under representation of bilingual students in special ed. So why is that? 
and it's really complicated. <laughs> so there's a long history of doing it, right? Um, and that's why in 1970, a bunch of Hispanic parents got together and sued the California Board of Education. So, and Diana versus the California Board of Education, um, and won and said, stop putting our kids into special ed just because they were tested in English instead of Spanish. In 1970, also in 1973, there was a study done in which Mexican American students were 10 times more likely to be put in special education than white students. So that is really important. Um, and we've come a long way since then. It's not 1973 anymore, but there's still a long way to go. So let's get, let's get into this um, statistics from, uh, which is in the, the chart in my, um, in my write-up. So the highest represented, or probably over-represented group with 18% of their student population in special ed is American Indian and Native Alaskan. So that, is probably having to do more with the assessments and with cultural relevancy and also resources than it is for actual uh, deficiencies or disabilities. And then, then the next highest group, um, which is black at 16% uh, of their population in special ed, probably for pretty similar reasons. And, uh, and then and then it's white and then Hispanic at 13%. So white is 14% and Hispanic is 13%. And it's like, okay, in 1973, Hispanics were 10 times more likely to be put in special ed and now it's at a little bit below the white average. Hmm, interesting. So why is that? And let's talk about this over and under representation. So on the one hand, Bilingual students can be underrepresented when it comes to dyslexia. So a lot of English language learners will be can be dyslexic just like anybody else, and they are underrepresented in special education. They don't get any special education support because the teacher can't tell the difference if they're dyslexic or uh, or English language learners. Then we also have a a fear from schools and institutions that the, that parents will sue if their kids get put into special ed when they're not in special ed. So there's that layer too. And then as far as overrepresentation is you know the kind of the opposite where people where teachers mistake um, English language learning for special education. So there's kind of a mishmash of things going on there. Favorite parts of that video, it really, really touched me, was when uh, the teacher, the teacher said to one, to one of the little boys uh, who was congratulating his friend for, for, for getting an answer right, and she said, me gusta como está celebrando su amiga. You know, I like the way that you're celebrating your friend. Um, that is, that's exactly what is great about special education and bilingual education is that we need to build each other up instead of being reductionist, being eliminatory, you know, oh, we can't speak Spanish at home because it's English only. And, um, it does a disservice to everyone. So I, I really enjoyed this and thank you so much for watching this whole video i know it's kind of long probably okay bye adios